Hi guys, and welcome to this Model Engineers Workshop. Today in the workshop, a couple of workshop gifts. Hi guys, I'm the chef. Today in the workshop, we're going to be looking at a couple of workshop gifts that I've received. The first one you've probably seen already because it's been in the background of the videos for the last two or three videos at least. And that's that nice looking little vintage sign over there. That came to me through my beautiful wife. Now, that's a really nice gift. She's been very supportive of me and I'll acknowledge that support here in this video and to wishing her and saying thank you very much, wishing that she'd stay in my life forever. I wish I'd known her for longer. Right, so that's gift number one. Now let's go to the bench and we'll have a look at gift number two. Okay, at the bench now. This is gift number two. Now this has been given to me by a friend of my wife and I. Uh, her name is Sue. I'm not going to go into any more details on that. Seems odd that a lady would have this, but this was actually her father's. Now, Sue is a lady of a mature age. You'll hate me for that, I'm pretty sure, but I'm not, I don't actually know how old she is, so I'm not, I can't tell you an exact number, not that I would anyway. And as you can see, this is a Moran Wright of Sheffield Imperial 0 to 1 micrometer number. What's that say? 2961, that's the model number. Now this micrometer not only reads thousands, but it has a second vernier on it there. Let me see, can we focus? Yep, there we go. So this will actually read into 10 thousands. You can see it's been well used. The use are clean. Everything's looking a bit smooth and worn, but that doesn't matter, it still moves. It's, can you hear the squeak? Got a squeak, so it could use a clean and a bit of an oil. The locking mechanism here is very stiff, and the ratchet thimble at the end is totally destroyed. It's obviously been dropped at some time. So to, I said that to the to the lady, the Sue, that I would clean it up and do a bit of a restoration on it by trying to find a new bit, and it came to me just like this: no case, no spanner. Nothing. So, as you can see, just over there, amazing what you can find on the internet these days. Right. This is an original Moran Wright Sheffield Limited Eng England 0 to 1 micrometer case. Also, scrounging around on the internet, I found a replacement ratchet. Oops. There you go. Just put that near the mic. There we go. So that's in perfect working order. I don't know what happened to the rest of the micrometer. It was just on sale. Also in the case, with the case, was the right spanner. Now they all look very similar to each other when you're doing a micrometer, but they're not. There is subtle differences, but this is a proper more and right one. As much as it's not stamped, it, let me put it this way. It's in the case. It fits. Right. So. What we're going to do? Well, we've got a clean rag on the bench just to be sure. Let's see if we can get this spanner to loosen this ratchet thimble. This is not easy. Oh, there we go, going through the camera. Oh, there we go. It, that's it. It's loose. I could feel it go. So let's unscrew that. And we'll. I'm just going to pop this in. It looks like it will. it's a good fit. Yeah, I'm going to get, yeah. Yeah, that's perfect. Right. Don't want to do that all the way just yet. Now, my information is that this should just, oh, there we go, pop off. And now we can unwind the spindle. This will take a little while. Yeah, it's looking a bit grotty, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, right. Excuse the fingers and fingernails. Just been doing some work on the machinery. I'll be cleaning those before I go back to work. Right, there's the spin there's the actual spindle. Although it's aged and stained, it's actually very smooth. There's no pitting in that. This piece. Do I want to take that off? Probably not. We could use a clean now. Now, this locking thimble here. There's a little slot there. Now, my information is that this, if you get it in the right place, should 
them out. And there's like three pieces to this, apparently. And uh, skin yourself a bit. Right, it doesn't really want to move at the minute. So I think I'm going to have to get a bit of WD-40 going. Why oh, does that come off? Well, it turns. Oh, that's loosening. I'll turn that off. Yeah, definitely needs a clean. I even got a hole for the spanner, but I didn't need it. Right. Somewhere here. Also a little hole so that when we come to calibrate it, we can actually use that little pin on the spanner. Which goes into there. I can get that right. There it is. And that allows you just to spin that sleeve. This should just be a sleeve. Oh, man, that's on there tight. Right, might just leave that alone. Don't think there's a... Oh, look at the muck on that. Right, don't think there's any other mechanism in here. Oh, here we go. Here we go, we're moving. Just a case of getting it lined up, I think. That little marker on there? Could be. Yep. Oh, yes, we're moving. No one truly gunked up. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Right, now apparently there's three bits to this. So I'm going to take it out very carefully. Trying to hold it together. Oh, there we go. Let's have a look. Well, I can see at least two. That's obviously... Yeah, that's interesting. Right, okay, does that piece come out? Yes, it does. All right, careful, careful. All right, so... Just gently, gently lift that out. It actually looks like it's got a split in it, so it might be some kind of spring. Right. Doesn't look like there's any kind of registration. Oh, is that a pin in there? Oh, look. I'll just get the scriber. Look at that. There's a little, so this is just a resistance spring. Look at it, he's got a spring there. Right, okay. Do I really want to take this apart? You know, I'm just going to gently push that back. And I think I'll give that a bit of a soak in WD-40 and we'll give it a wipe off. If I don't really want to take that apart, I think I don't want to. Right, I'm just going to stop the video here, guys. I'm going to get this into some... WD-40. I'm just going to give this all a good spray with the WD-40 and give it a good old rubbing over with a clean rag. And when I get things all shined up, and we'll put it back together and recalibrate it. Right. Okay, guys. Back in a little while. Right, guys. It's been about three quarters of an hour, and I've cleaned off a reasonable amount of muck. As you can see, we have the cotton buds in there. That's just WD-40. That was crystal clear when I took it out of the spray. Sprayed it in there, rather. And you can see here where the bits have been dripping on and all the muck on the bench over here. There's some big chunks in that. The locking ring, I've still left it as three pieces, as you can see. Very, very ingenious little mechanism is this, because that's it. As you see, there's the main ring, there's the inner ring, and then there's this tiny little pin in there. And if I can get it to do it, if I move it that way, that little gap there, back. Right, you can see how wide that little gap is there, that little split in the inner ring. If I move it, there we go. You can see that it almost closes up. Of course what that does is it makes that hole just small enough to clamp onto this shaft wherever, whatever position it may be when it's in the frame. Very ingenious. The only thing that holds that into the mechanism of the, of the micrometer itself is the shaft going through the middle and that little locking, that little stud on there, that little spigot goes into that little slot there and that's all that holds that, very clever. No locking screw or anything to hold it in place. Anyway, this little ring screws onto this bit. As you can see, there are one, two, three slots in that. That is actually a tapered thread. And as you screw this on, you can adjust the tightness of the thread, the 
tightness of this hole at the end onto that thread so you eliminate any slop or backlash uh, because that's got the split and it will just clamp that down sufficiently it's like this little three splits I put in this uh, split bushing that we used to make the caps for the oil cups in the last video video 32 this is 33 so first things first let's get that on now I'm not putting any oil on that because you don't really want it to be oily and slippery and move around it needs to be reasonably tight and we'll just put a little bit of what is sewing machine oil onto here they do I know companies like Stadat, 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 whatever, in America, they make their own. It's only like 60 bucks for 100 mil, 60 American for 100 mil. So that's what, uh, 600 American, so 1,200 Oz, 1,000 a litre. God, you wouldn't want to be buying too much of that, would you? Right, so let's get this into here. So now that little spigot there you know, it needs to go into that slot in the frame yeah go in for me oh i see it's not quite there you see those bits are so precisely matched to that thickness there we go just hold that centrally put the shaft in again just tiny and a, that's very very light sewing machine oil that should start. Come on, focus. Thank you. Yeah, I started threading in, I believe. Feels like it. Come on. Yes, we're through. There we go. You can just see that face spinning around. This micrometer is that old. It was Sue's father's. He was an engineer in some job shop or something, by the sound of things. And this lived in his pocket for years. Uh, these faces, of course, would be known, uh, what is known as glass hard. They're not carbide, uh, like modern micrometers are. Um, if anybody's watching this and knows when a model 2961 was introduced, that would be interesting to know. Sue is a lady of mature years, and it was her father's, and she can always remember him carrying it in his pocket. So uh, this must be <sighs> at least 70 years old. That would make it back to about 1950, I suppose, post-war. Yep, I suppose it must be something like that. Right. So this ring, of course, as it closes that down, it tightens up on the internal thread, but this feels about right. And again, I've not oiled it because you really want it to stay still. The rest you can very lightly oil, and then you wipe the most off. I'm not sure what Sue's father did in this, what I think must have been a job shop, but if you notice, this part of the frame's been ground off. It should come basically up here. It should be maybe another, I don't know, three thirty seconds of an inch, the sixteenth of an inch, so somewhere between two and three mil fatter. And he's, he's ground it away. Not that it affects the uh, accuracy of the micrometer by any means, but he's obviously had to get that into a very tight, a, a tighter space than it was designed to. And so he's just, it looks ground rather than filed. It's almost too smooth, I think be filed but anything's possible but one way or the other right now the thimble of course slots onto here and I'll go down a bit there we are, I think yep we're right down then the new right well it's not new but the second hand ratchet that I found goes in there now you can see there's a little taper here Get it against the white background yeah focus come on now focus or not that's better now that taper fits in the end of the shaft with the thread, thread, and the shaft goes over it like that. But that sh shaft at the end of the shaft also has two splits in it. So when that taper goes in, it pushes that thread out, that part, plain part of the shaft at the end. There, there you can see one of the splits. And there we go. that then locks it into the thimble. I'm far enough just yet. No, that's it. There we go. So this will tighten down, span it. We can span it out on. Come on. 
I'm doing this, sorry, I just banged the camera. Just give us a second, guys. I'm doing this through the camera. It doesn't really help. So I'm just going to screw that down. But now I can feel it starting to tighten. Okay. That's it. Through threads biting. I suppose that's even a, an imperial thread, probably a BA, a British Association. Right, so. Right, let's see if I can hold that still long enough and just get a little bit more tightness on it. Tell you what, let's just very carefully just give that a tweak. Hopefully, we can yep, loosen that off. You can see the shaft spinning around. Nice bit of patina on there. So, let's have a look. Where's the there's the zero line. There's the zero on the thimble. No, I've taken that too far. That thimble is just going round. Right, let's just line that up a bit. There's ten, five. There's zero. There's zero there. If this moves, then we can very shortly we can adjust the calibration. Let's just see if I can hold that. Tight. <coughs> just to there we go. Everything spinning. Yep. Just to oh come on, focus. Right. See if we can undo it at that. Yep. There we go. Right. Now. Yeah. Now you can see that we're about almost two thousandths out. This is where we use the other side of the spanner for, because just there's a hole. We need to bring that zero there down a bit. So we're going to be rotating it this way. So if I get the spanner into there and lock it into its hole, and then give this a bit of a tug, it should. He says should move and rotate that shaft spin sleeve on there should rotate. You can see we're lining up nicely now. Okay, find it out. There we go. That's just for the resistance. Yep. Now we can. Wind it down like this using the big thimble when you get down to put the spanner in there. When you get down to the thickness or close, it's just time contacting. There you go. That's oops, bang the camera again. Sorry guys. And then you can start reading it. Let's have a look. What have we got there? I can see three. So each one of those is 25. So one to 75 plus 50. So it's about 90 there thick. I'm not really good at metric, it's just over actually, isn't it? So you go start looking for the one that lines up the best. There you go. I would say the three. So that's 75 plus 14 plus three, 75, 89, so eight, 0 0.0893 inch, which is about, yeah, about a mil and a half. Right guys, so, oops, simple little thing today, restored Sue's dad's, well restored, not cleaned and recalibrated, Sue's dad's micrometer, so it now has its, now has a case for it, a spanner, there we go, and a micrometer. Now, I don't know if you believe in that kind of thing, but hopefully... If Sue's dad's looking down, there you go, sir. That's your micrometer. I will treasure it forever, or as long as I can anyway. And then I will make sure it goes to somebody who will also treasure it, because it has a history. It has provenance, I think is the word, isn't it? Although that might be paintings only. All right, guys. So a little bit shorter video today. It's only about 20 odd minutes by the look of things. 18, 19, 20 minutes. Right. There you go. So if you ever find an old micrometer, hey, it, they're always worth redoing. Unless they're bent and twisted, take them apart, clean them, light oil, put them back together, 
They will serve you for years to come. All right, guys, give us a tip. Right, guys, simple little job for today. One well worth doing. Cleaning and re recalibrating. Re That's the word, calibrating. Recalibrating a very old my, uh, micrometer that was given to me. So it's the father of a friend of ours. Must be This thing must be at least 70 years old. As I said, if you know when a Model 2961 was introduced by Moore & Wright of Sheffield in England, I'd love to hear it. A bit of history would be useful. A bit of provenance. All right, guys, I'll bring this video to a close by saying, as I always do, if you can find it in your heart and soul to give me a like and subscribe and maybe hit that bell, just to get the notifications. If you're a watcher, please, please, please. It would be greatly appreciated if you could subscribe as well. It all helps. It just keeps my motivation going. All right, guys, this is the chef for this time around signing out and saying, see you later.